Hello there and welcome back Cozy Club. My name is Cozy Gamer and it is great to have you guys back over here at the channel. We have just hit 13,000 subscribers and I want to thank you guys so much. We've got a brand new video for you guys today and we're going to be going over the top 20, yes, top 20 winners of the upcoming Gear 9. And yes, even though Gear 9 seems so far out of reach for many of you, it is never too early to start kind of planning your farming and investing into safe characters or into characters that for the long haul are going to continue to be viable within pvp the raid and club conquest so on today's video in today's list we've got 20 characters and five honorable mentions and we're going to go ahead and go through and take a look at both the upgraded abilities that they're going to go ahead and unlock right now all of them have to wait to your gear nine and we're also going to look at the stats that they can get you can start adding those on right now for gear 8.5 and then we'll get the other pieces later now more likely than not we're not going to see gear 9 until the upcoming olympus or zeus raid does come out but we can definitely go ahead and kind of look at the stats and the abilities and we can talk about the biggest winners this isn't a tier list this isn't talking about the best characters at tier 9 just by far who's the biggest winners who went from here all the way to here or in a lot of cases from here all the way to up here <laughs> so cozy club there is over 124 playable characters and we're trying to pick just 20 but let's go ahead let's jump right in and start with just five honorable mentions and then we'll get to the top 20 let's go ahead and get to today's video cozy club so yes this list was a bit of a doozy to make right now we're in this kind of synergy meta and to look at who was the biggest winners of the list we looked at everybody's kits looked at their stats looked at who's getting the most offense for an offense character speed for supports abilities that aren't just damage upgrades but big things that are going to change the abilities in the kits altogether and not just kind of flat bonuses all around now i will say with the t7 to t8 upgrade that we did have with the gear they're kind of more creative with the ability upgrades right now there's a lot of 50 percent damage upgrades however there are definitely some diamonds in the roughs and some great ability upgrades out there so we're going to take that all into consideration with today's list and then also something to kind of think about and something that I'm going to be doing with my tier 8.5s and going into tier 9 is we do want to kind of wait and look what this new raid looks like. Because if the new raid comes out and it absolutely kicks our butts, takes us down and we just can't beat it, you're going to want to level up and get these characters that are the best in the raid, in the new Olympus raid, whatever that looks like. And you're going to want to take them up first to tier 9, most likely to help out your club and get more gear for everybody so for the most part that's probably what i'm expecting to do myself but there's definitely some big winners just to take them up a little bit and enhance their stats so let's go ahead and kick off this list with the honorable mentions first up we've got big bad wolf who's going to be gaining eight speed while she desperately needs the speed he already hit some great damage numbers against hero opponents which right now pretty much everyone is a hero hercules beast mickey mouse everyone he's gonna be hitting he's gonna get that big damage multiplier his basic gets a damage upgrade his passive feeds more magic big bad wolf was definitely worth an honorable mention spot now king triton is one that a lot are taking up that are struggling with the forbidden depths and also looking at the raids to come he's gonna get some nice raid synergy in there however with king triton i just feel like we're gonna get yet another set of raid characters so i am holding off on him but he did get some nice upgrades for the forbidden deaths team one of the best ones now with all the recent nerfs and definitely worth an honorable mention outside of that we have stitch and moana both of them gaining high damage on their basics both of them gaining all offense stats up for each and every one of their gear 8.5 pieces they're getting some nice speed you've got some nice ability adjustments stitch and moana they already destroyed with those basics and they're going to be doing a lot more now if you guys haven't stopped by the twitch stream i use moana a ton and if maui does get a side adventure i think he's definitely a must farm for the free to play faction but we'll get to that here in just a little bit outside of them too we also have rapunzel who could have easily made this top 20 list restoration incantation is getting a great upgrade that's going to now be able to flip harmful effects instead of cleanse them which is huge just to go ahead and get that offense down to offense up 
She's getting speed and offense all around and definitely some nice synergy to tie in with the ever improving princess faction. Now that does remind me, I am gonna make a top kind of upcoming teams for tier nine. Which ones you guys wanna go ahead and look at and let me know down in the comments below if you want both a tier nine team video as well as just understanding gear nine altogether. What is the gear you wanna farm? Which ones are harder to get? What do we think we're gonna get from the raids? everything in between go ahead and comment down below if that is something you would like to see now it is time to fire through the top 20 we've got a lot to go through so let's go rapid fire through these here we go starting off the list we've got at number 20 pocahontas now as you guys know i'm a big fan of pocahontas we've got a complete spotlight talking about all the things she does great so if you want to see that go ahead and click up in the right above corner to check out that video but with Pocahontas, she is getting a plus eight speed. She has a big improvement to her lead, adding more offense, more defense, and more support. She's gonna go ahead and get more healing capabilities with this special and her passive. And then she's gonna be granting even more speed. So overall, Pocahontas is a great support for the Princess faction, but also a phenomenal leader that you will be continuing to use down the line. At number 19, we've got Flash the Dash. And let me tell you guys, there's not a lot to, we don't have to break down a lot here. Dash is insane. You know the damage that he can do. He's getting offense up with all of these pieces in his gear. No extra speed. He's still going to be at that 139, which is now looking a little bit slow. I wish they gave him at least one more speed piece. But really, guys, the dash here is why we're going to go ahead and put him at 19. 50% damage dealt. Now, I'm going to let you guys know, just because you guys see this 50% number doesn't mean they're going to make it on this list because with everything bumping up, it kind of all evens out. However, there's a few abilities that we have to rank and this one, the dash, is going to be phenomenal damage in Club Conquest in the new upcoming raid. Phase 2 in the Forbidden Deaths, definitely worth the number 19 spot. At number 18, we've got Madam Mim, and she is getting the much-needed damage that she deserved. Now, she'll be getting a speed piece, she's getting offense, but more importantly, she's getting 50% damage in all of the abilities that needed it. And on top of that... Vile Venom is going to be doing some crazy things against Hercules. And those characters that are getting a lot of buffs like Donald Duck or like Scrooge, deal 25% bonus damage per helpful effect removed by Purge. It's going to be insane and it's going to hit some killer damage. On top of that, her passive, even more potency. Madam Mim, definitely worthy of this list. At number 17, we have Scrooge McDuck, which on paper... You could glance by, maybe didn't look like the best upgrades. Scrooge is going to get even more speed, which he was very slow. So he'll be up to 130, which is still going to be slow for tier 9 terms. However, Money Dive and Number 1 Dime got amazing upgrades. Money Dive got even more damage. This thing had to get nerfed back a while back because of the damage. And we're going to kind of go back to those heydays of the crazy stacking of helpful effects. And then you've got another magic cost decrease on number one dime. If you don't know, Scrooge is very much deserving of his own video. Phenomenal support. You're going to be able to give crazy buffs out like harmful immunity and offense up every two turns. Scrooge McDuck, definitely on the list. At number 16, we've got Namari and whoo. Namari, Namari, Namari. Namari could be ranked in the top 10 and probably no one would question it. And here's the thing, she doesn't even get crazy ability upgrades. She gets 50% here, nothing on this one, and a little bit more survivability. But what is absolutely crazy is that she is going to be gaining all this offense with all this new gear. She's one of those characters like Simba that scales very nicely with each and every gear level. And that's because of the assassin passive that she has. The more offense, the numbers, she's hitting 7, 8,000 whenever a character gets low on health. Namari is going to be just beyond busted and insane and is definitely worth this spot. Now, she's going to be one of the best or better tunes at gear 9. Not the biggest winner because there are other characters that went from here to here. But Namari continues to just get better and better. And before I forget, Kingdom Villains are going to be insane. I'll get a video on that coming up soon. At number 15, we've got yet another Kingdom Villain, Jafar. Where do I even begin on Jafar? Now, let me just go ahead and get this out of the way. Jafar, he's not getting any crazy ability upgrades. He doesn't need them. 
let's go ahead and break down why is Jafar worth number 15 on this list and <laughs> It's all about his speed. Now, we talked about this on my stream. Jafar, I've seen my grandma run at least a 115. Jafar is at a 113, and he was unable to get anything done, even maxed out in the current meta. So what did Glue do? They took a look at Jafar. They said, Dash is at 139. Let's do something crazy. So what did they do? The guy with the Jafar tattoo at the back offices of Glue gave this guy not eight speed, not 16 speed, but 24 plus speed on his entire kit, bringing him up to a staggering 137, only two less than Dash. This is not your grandmother's Jafar. You're gonna go ahead and get a two turn charm. His time is running out is a great ability and he's much worth the top 15 spot. Number 14, we have the Princess Merida. Now you guys know Merida is already one of the best kind of single characters in the game. Unfortunately, the wilds get just about no love, but the damage that this girl can pump out is crazy. And she's getting 50% upgrade on her basic that can hit three characters for a staggering amount. She gets a big 50% on Reign of Arrows. Nothing here, but oh well, her passive is getting a plus two bonus percent per wisp up to plus eight percent under a Pocahontas lead. It's enough said. Merida is going to be nuts. Coming in at number 13, we've got Pain and Panic. Now, Pap or Pain and Panic, already amazing characters and the villains just keep on rising, baby. So what are they getting and why are they this high up on the list? Well, first, they are getting a speed piece, which is huge for how their kit works. To get that stasis out there nice and early, shut down the Hercules, shut down the Beast, the Baymax, whatever you need to do. Villains are on the rise and then combine that with a 50% upgrade on their basic and then 15% speed stolen. Not gained, but stolen. You're going to officially just shut down one character entirely for the entire match. This is a very solid upgrade and they're going to get a ton of survivability with damage reduction and even more evasions coming with Hades doing his combust and altogether very nice upgrade for the pap. At number 12, we've got Gaston. Now, I never thought we would live in a world in DSA where Gaston was going to be considered a pretty powerful character. Now, let me tell you guys this. Ana, she gives nice turn meter to people. You've got Barley gifting the turn meter in the guaranteed crits. Gaston with villains is going to be probably one of the most important characters if you plan on running an all villains team. Now, you guys know lately, that's all I run. Villains is by far my favorite team. I added the speed pieces. The guy's getting two plus eights, so he's getting 16 extra speed. Taking him up, I've got him at 150 with the speed stone. I believe he's 130 outside of that. He's going to get not the best ability upgrades. However, he's getting plus five on the speed meter increase, which <laughs> is bonkers. Look at this, guys. He's going to go ahead and grant all of his teammates 15% turn meter, right? On top of that, he's going to give another 15% on villains. This is going up by 5%. So is this going to be 40%? AOE turn meter? Ridiculous. Number 11, we've got the legendary beast. And let me tell you guys, we'll make this very short and sweet. The beast could be higher. He could be a beast is an incredible character. He's getting a speed piece, which is massive to work with his passive. And then he's getting plus 50% on his basic. That's already one of the best basics in the game. He counters all the time. He's getting turn meter all the time. However, not just his basic cozy club. Oh, no, no. But get out. The ability that Bell can summon is getting a whopping 50% as well. Complete bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. All right, we're at the halfway mark. We've got number 10 going to be Miguel. Now, I'm a little wishy-washy on upgrading Miguel myself. First and foremost, he's a pay-to-play character all the way through. Zeus, most likely, who you guys know, Ursula, is a free-to-play character over time with the raid. Zeus will be the same, and Zeus, most likely, is going to have a leadership ability. Now, outside of Miguel's leadership, still a phenomenal character, and his leadership, right now, Miguel does make up the best teams in the game. However, that's why I'm not investing in him myself. 
But looking at what he gets and why he's at number 10, if we take a look, he's going to be getting much needed speed, more health and survivability. His basic gets a little damage, doesn't really matter there. But if we look at his upgrades as a support character, he's going to be getting a 5% speed meter increase on adjacent allies. That's a big bump up, a 33% upgrade, if you will. Next up, Spotlight Debut. He's a cleanser. He can already cleanse two different debuffs he prioritizes charm stun sleep and silence already but ladies and gentlemen he'll be adding yet another debuff on here for three aoe cleansing debuffs he's gonna be great in the raid and a very solid character overall coming in at number nine might surprise you guys but esmeralda esmeralda is going to be sensational now kingdom they're already on the up and up with each and every patch kingdom is only getting better Esmeralda is already a great character by herself, plug and playable to most teams. You now need her to get into the Ascension campaign. But regardless of all of that, guys, Esmeralda, she's going to get extra speed. That's going to push her out of 137. Good damage upgrades to the basic. But Dance of Defiance is going to be able to now cleanse four harmful effects on adjacent allies. If that wasn't enough, she's going to be able to get a huge additional harmful effect flip. Like whenever Silence comes out, she can kind of like Honey Lemon trigger, flip that debuff to a buff, but it'll now be two of them. And then lastly, her survivability is going way up and it's going to pair very nicely with Furlough. If you go ahead and check out her passive, she's now going to start with this ability at the beginning of battle. Huge absolutely monster upgrades for esmeralda now at number eight is probably the most simple upgrade but a very powerful character coming in at number eight is going to be maui now let's go ahead let's pull up maui and see what is he exactly getting well maui is getting a speed piece more recovery that's gonna boost up those shields more hp and defense to allow him to tank more and then let's go ahead and look at these abilities now he doesn't get a lot with the basic damage. It's okay. A little bit more damage on the Hawk. That's great. The Whale is going to add yet an another more chance to go ahead and put that AoE stun out there. That's going to be up to a 45% chance for the entire team to be stunned. But the true kind of diamond here is going to be his leadership adding 30% shield gain at the start of battle. Now, Guys, if you don't know, we're heading into a massive damage kind of meta, pumping out crazy numbers once we get to T8.5 or T9. And surviving is going to be huge in that. In the Oceanics, they've always done it well, but Maui is going to get that job and do it way, way better. You're welcome. Invest in Maui. Next up at number seven, we've got probably a surprising one to most of you. It's going to be sheer Khan. Now, guys, I already put the speed piece on Sheer Khan. The villains continue to be on the rise. But Sheer Khan is going to be getting crazy ability upgrades. His offense is already insane. We don't even have a proper wild lead. And on top of that, we definitely don't have a wild lead for the villains because Pocahontas is heroes only. Check out what Sheer Khan is getting, guys. First and foremost, he's getting damage upgrades to his basic. But this next ability that already hits monster damage will be getting 50% damage increase. That's going to go ahead and damage uh, increase the damage here. And the continuous damage most likely will get bumped up. And then if that wasn't enough, guys, check out this passive. Read it for yourselves. Check it out. Increase speed meter by 30% after dealing a critical strike. Now, there's no cooldown. There is no cooldown. This is going to be something that just elevates Shere Khan to be one of the better characters in the game. Possibly, possibly even S tier. This is going to be just great for Shere Khan as a whole. And he's got a very simple kit that the AI can use on defense. I'm stupid excited about the tiger. At number six is the guy that just stays in the meta. And Glue is showing us once again... Sean, you could easily be probably the winner of this patch. One of the best in this patch, if you will. Let's go ahead and kind of break down why is Sean Yu getting such a massive upgrade. Now, first and foremost, he's the leader of the Kingdom Villains. Kingdom Villains are looking on Fire Baby El Fuego. But if we look, he's getting a speed piece, offense pieces. But this leadership, guys, is what really stands out. Whenever you kill anybody, any opponent that you kill, doesn't matter 
you're going to have a chance to give all of your kingdom teammates haste for two turns, guys. Haste for two turns and offense up for two turns. Absolutely bonkers. That's going to give you a giant advantage in the kingdom villains, as you guys have been seeing. Gaston, Jafar, Namari. They're so fast already. This is going to be a huge upgrade. He also gets some great damage upgrades to his headbutt. That's going to get him another turn. The Hawk is getting something nice. And then the basic. So, Sean Yu, very much deserving and could be the winner of the patch. Breaking into the top five, we've got the Sea Witch that everybody loves. It is going to be Ursula. Now, Ursula, uh, when you look at the kid, it doesn't seem that crazy at first. Uh, nothing too big that meets the eye. Let's break it down a little. First, she's getting a speed piece. She's getting some nice offense upgrades. But on top of that, look at these abilities. Now, first, her basic is getting a damage upgrade. Huge. If you know the double tap of an empowerment, uh, Ursula, it, it, the damage is nuts. But if we look even further, let's go ahead and get to a little bit of magic. This ability never gains bonus damage. It already does crazy you can see crazy damage right here 7,000. it's gonna do two continuous damages if she's empowered it's gonna do it to adjacent opponents but she'll now be getting a bonus 50 percent on this that's gonna take her to the next level she's already such a great plug and play a phenomenal leader for the villains ursula all of her upgrades got nice bonuses including her leadership worthy of a top five coming in at number four is everybody's favorite hero it's hercules baby yes yes the rich keep getting richer you guys saw beast you saw ursula we're here hercules we didn't think was gonna get a big update but he is going to get even better most likely to prepare himself to be the hero of the new olympus raid now First and foremost, he got a speed piece. He got offense with all of his upgrades as if he even needed it. That counter that everybody, everybody knows and loves. Well, it got a 50% damage upgrade on that. Is zero to hero. Like it didn't do enough damage already. 50% damage upgrade. His uh, true hero passive, another crit. So now he can afford to counter and kill you in the same turn. On top of that, he got even more damage reduction on his abilities. He is going to be absolutely phenomenal, and he is already crazy of a character. Now, let me tell you this. There are plenty of ways to counter this guy now. All these other characters got bonuses that I think can top Hercules very well with the synergy overall, but Herc is still just stupid good. Coming in at number three, breaking into the top three is going to be none other than the Cozy Club's favorite, Papa gantu now let me tell you papa gantu he got his air jordans he's already faster than hell but look at this 156 speed this guy is gonna be cruising with his new jays and on top of that he gets nice offense boost with all of his stats but we can ignore all the nice damage upgrades that he gets 50 percent up on abomination nutty this is the one we want to focus the death star raining down galactic armada is going to be giving not just Oceanics Cozy Club, but all teammates, every teammate, every single John, Jane, and Mary is going to be getting tactics on the field. That's crazy. Tactics is such an elite buff and not a lot of characters have access to it, yet alone characters can give it to everybody. You have Merlin, you have Bubbles for single targets. Gantu will now give it AOE, and just in case you don't know what tactics is, check up in the top right hand corner and we've got the buffs broken down for everybody it's a crazy buff and papa gantu top three baby we are on the final two and at number two it's going to be the queen the snow queen elsa my friends elsa is gonna make her way back into the meta and i'm actually i'm happy for her she had some struggling times recently with the nerf to bubbles the ticket you can't really do the giant elsa bombs elsa now though is getting a speed piece her offense is scaling very nicely. And I can sum it up in two words. Show yourself. Show yourself. Show yourself. Show yourself is getting plus 50% damage upgrade. I can't even... I don't even... Nuts. Elsa is definitely worth a top two. She's going to be putting out some crazy damage. That could be the only thing they upgraded and she'd still be at a top five list. So we have listed 24 other characters. Honorable mentions. The top 20 we're at number one, guys. And 
who is it is it someone from the f tier the d tier rising up wrong it's going to be the lord of the underworld king hades himself at the number one spot and the biggest winner in my book with the new update now yes a lot of you guys might be saying where's emperor zerg where's claude furlo both of them insane and they're gonna be kind of how they are already but even more damage zerg could easily be on this list furlo there's other characters but Hades, check out this number one spot and what he gained. He got a speed piece bringing him up to 138 speed. That's even with an offense stone. With a max out gear 8.5, I've already taken the liberty to max him out where we can currently take him. He's going to be at 3,000, almost 600 offense. He's got a combust that's getting a 50% damage upgrade, which as you guys know, when pain and panic, whenever a villain dies, has the opportunity to go ahead, trigger can bust automatically, regardless on the magic. When he does get in power now, he's gonna get more magic for all of his abilities. And oh yeah, he assists all the time. He assists with furlough. He assists every time pain and panic goes. Well, his basic attack with his assist is also getting plus 50%. I can't even, it boggles the brain. Hades is gonna be in the meta for a very long time if you've had any questions whether to take up the king the lord of the underworld hades himself whether you want him in his robes or not is now going to be easily a top five character in dsa and the winner of the biggest upgrades in t9 so there you have it cozy club we went through the five honorable mentions the top 20 winners of gear 9 trust me guys there's a lot of great characters getting upgrades but just by looking at all the stats and the speed upgrades, plus the new abilities, this is going to be the top 20 list for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. We've got a lot of Gear 9 videos coming up, so do keep in mind if you want to see more of those, comment down below what kind of videos you guys want to see. We hit 13,000 subs, and I want to thank you guys so much. And if you haven't, join the Cozy Club community today. My friends, thank you guys so much for stopping by. I will see you guys next time, and until then... Stay cozy.